everybody. Welcome back to my movie review series. Today we'll be discussing Maze. Now the typical thing, actually no one watches anything I do, that's step number one. In case you do stumble upon this video, I will be giving you the, uh, some logistics, the overall impressions and grade of the movie after reading the overview as provided by Google, along just with any logistics setting, stuff like that about movies. And if you have not seen the movie and would like to, based or not based on my recommendation, you're going to shut off the video. Again, because I'm, my, my grading system used to be, you know, F, I left the theater or turned off the video. Since I'm just making content, I haven't been turning anything off. Um, anything, and D is off-putting where I don't recommend, C is just whatever, um, B is entertaining, and uh, A is really well done. So, pretty much anything above C is recommended, or I'll just say B, B. B and A are recommended, and C is just whatever, and D is not recommended. So, today we have a not rated movie, it's probably, I don't know, PG-13. 2017 thriller drama for an hour and 32 minutes. I watched it for free on, I think, Hulu. Uh, yeah, but you can watch it for free on Tubi. It says, the world's the story of Europe's biggest prisoner escape since the Second World War as 38 IRA prisoners break out of Northern Ireland's Mays Prison in 1983. And so again, prison break stories, interesting to me. Real, real life history, interesting to me. Again, I don't know too much about Northern Ireland in the 1980s, but... <laughs> so we had 92% liked it on Rotten Tomatoes, 66% liked it on Google, 5.9 out of 10 on IMBD. Doesn't really, doesn't have any other, um, much other things. But set in Northern Ireland, just a story about a real historical events of prisoners escaping. I, mean, I don't, I don't know the, the political landscape of the IRA or anything, anything close to that. So overall, I like the historical aspect, like just prison break stories in general. As an American, as a fucking Yankee, kind of hard to understand um, some of the delivery of the lines and the Irish accent. But overall, I was entertained. I thought it was good. So I will give it, I'll give it a, uh, just a solid B. A B plus for the history. And so, short, short little movie. Thought the characterizations were solid. Kind of hard to hear some of the lines. Overall, I enjoyed it and certainly recommend it. So, if you have not seen the movie, would like to, if you want to turn off this video, there will be spoiler alerts. And so, the movie opens up and you meet a, pr a prisoner who's in Again, this, uh, the maze, this, this prison, his name's Larry Marley. He's got a wife, Kate Marley, a son, Danny Marley. You have uh, a major character, an officer, Gordon Close. He has a wife, Jill Close. Um, there's, there's a bunch of other, I don't say a bunch, but a, good, a handful of other pretty major characters that I just can't match to the, to the names from the, from the show. And so they open up and they're in, they're in this prison and it, uh, a hunger strike had just ended, which I guess means people just refused to eat. And so there was like, you know, a bunch of clashing between police officers and prisoners. And so the prisoners are allowed to wear just everyday clothes. Um, and now, again, the, the loyalists versus the IRA people, you know, I have no idea the political drama or whatever is really going on. But they're, they're, they have this, like, the two, the two separate, like, groups staying on the same cell block. So you have some history, again, of... You know, 15 police officers have died, 10 IRA members have died from this hunger strike, and the police officers died just trying to enforce the rules, and the, the prisoners just refused to eat until they died. And so, pretty, pretty interesting, <laughs> as, like a, as like a protest, there's like a show of force or something, just to, just to starve yourself to death seems kind of strange. But regardless, that's what's going on during the prison. Um, and basically, uh, Larry decides that and they need to show that the IRA is not down and out, and to do so, they're going to stay or they're going to escape from the prison. And so, I think the, the major, the other major character that he goes back and forth with is, with is Oscar, but he basically divide, devises a plan. They start collecting data, or just like you know, we need to know everything that's going on, and how, how what is what is set up like, like the the environment, the area, because I guess one of the characters says, you know, I, I've been here for four years and I have no idea what's up the outside of the walls, so they're trying to get the logistics, the blueprint of the facility. And so, they have some, they, you know, some minor scuffles with the other, with the other side, the other team, or the other group. Um, but they also need like a go-ahead or approval from like the IRA members that are outside of the prison. And so, Danny Marley, Larry's son, 
Oh, I think Larry said he's been in, in jail for about 10 years. But he's getting mixed up in the I IRA. Um, they have a couple scenes of visiting hours. Larry meets with his wife, Kate. Um, Kate, I believe, they're not, they don't go to London. Oh, they, they might, I don't know. No, they just, Larry and Kate's relationship stays solid throughout. But then Larry also has another meeting with a, a widow, young widow, just what they called her. They shouldn't give her a name. But just talking about the hunger strike and saying that her husband had, did not die for nothing. And so they continue to, to devise this plan, get the logistics, understand the facility. And basically, about, I don't know, third, a third of the way through the movie, um, the, they get into a pretty major scuffle with this, this other loyalist group. And they, they come in like playing instruments, like a band or something. They get like a, like a, like a nation or like a group music, not like a concert. And so they have a pretty major scuffle there. And then they, they, they remove the, the loyalists from the cell block where these, all of these people are at. Or all these IRA members are at. And so Larry's the mastermind behind the plan. They get all this stuff going. Basically what they're going to do is they learn that the entire facility is, you know, has extremely concentrated power. And so um, they're going to try to basically just the food line, the food truck that comes in and out of the facility. They have a plan to get onto the food truck and to, they have to like also have people stay at this main gate thing to keep the doors open or something like that. But that's, that's really what they're doing and they're just getting ready to make a break for it. And so when Larry meets with Danny, um, Marley, his son, he's basically like, you know, Danny, if you, if you stop doing IRA stuff, and Danny's like, well, why not? Dad, do you have any regrets? And he was like, absolutely not. And he's like, well, if it's good enough for you, why isn't it good enough for me? And Danny's, Larry's just going to push his son to go in the right path. And um, he was like, you know, if you, if you promise to graduate, I don't know if it's high school or college, I think it's college. But if you promise to graduate college, then I will, um, then I will uh, be in the front row. And so that has development for the, the escape later on. Pretty very early in the movie, um, Larry kind of like picks out Officer Gordon. Not exactly sure why, but he's just going to become friendly with them and try to get them just learn more stuff about the facility, get more information, blah, blah, blah. And so pretty early on in IRA, Gordon is out with his wife Jill and their daughter, plays a super minor role, and they go out to eat, or they go to the movies, or they go wherever, they're going out, and this dude comes up and tries to shoot um, Officer Gordon. Gordon sees the guy coming after him and shoots him first. And so you don't even know if that guy dies. He's just rolling around on the ground, and that's really the end of the scene. But regardless, Jill is now very scared and is like, you know, don't go back to the prison um, because he's clearly the coordinator of the IRA, and uh, that causes them to separate. So Jill and her and her daughter go to London, and the daughter goes to school. So Officer Gordon is not, you know, back in the in the uh, penitentiary, the prison. Um, Larry Marley wants to um, stay busy, so he's doing. He's, he has for work to do. And so, again, gathering information about the, the facility. And so, he becomes kind of, kind, of, kind of close, or at least friendly, or at least, you know, they have, they have some sort of relationship between him and Gordon. And so, probably about, I don't know, halfway through the movie, or, yeah, probably about halfway, they get word from the outside IRA members that they do not have the go-ahead to do Larry's plan. And so, there's a couple of scenes where Larry's very upset. You know, he's writing really small and like smuggling out notes through, through, through women and whatever. And then pretty quickly back at, for whatever reason, they follow Officer Gordon home or this bread truck dude home and they think that the plan's doable or something. You just coordinated with the effort to make the IRA whatever, you know, the gang members or the, the group wants to do. So they, it, the plan gets called off and gets called back on rather quickly. And so they figure out they can real, uh, fit 38 people in this bread truck. They're going to hijack it, have them drive out, have, you know, have a couple guys stay back in this like, control room that they have to have for some reason, and the rest of them are just going to drive off in this food truck and escape. And so they, they have the final plan is um, they do get like a picture of the actual facility from the outside somehow. I think the guy says like just off the news station um, or the news broadcast, but they also smuggle in some weapons for their heist. They don't want, they're not trying to shoot the police guards, but they're trying to break out of prison. So they smuggle him out, I think he says six guns will be enough. And so 
when, on the day that the breakout comes, uh, Larry's kind of like, like kind of like hanging around Officer Gordon. Gordon goes home, then comes back, and he's like, you know, why are you back? He always, Larry keeps watching the clock and the cameras. Because again, Officer Gordon's in the security room. Larry's doing like mopping and stuff outside, but he can like see into the room and they look at the security cameras. And so, the other prisoners, again, it's a pretty big prison, so it's like he's not in the area where these other prisoners are. Um, other prisoners put the plan into action. They pull out the guns. They they disarm and uh, declothe all of the correctional officers, and they put on their their um, outfits or their uniforms. <coughs> And now it goes off, it goes pretty pretty solid up until that point. One guard does get shot in that scene. Um, I think he, he survives. I think at the end of the movie they, they show some like again, historical credits, so like you know what happened. And I think that guy survives. We need to get shot either in the head or just just somewhere. And there's a doctor on scene, so they're like they're like the prisoners want to help them. They're just trying to get out, but they're willing to do what they have to do. And so. Um, they pile into this bread truck and they start moving. And so one guy's crouching down like this, holding a guy hostage, you know, saying, there's a bomb under your seat, classic, classic Irish power bomb. But, but it's like, that'd be pretty uh, counterproductive if you're sitting right next to the bomb too. It's like, you have a gun on them. It should be, should be good enough, you think. But regardless, they start driving, plans going, plans going well, there's no sirens blasting, no one's been alert and alerted yet. Um, they go up to this administration building, the center part where they have to have a couple guys stay or go in. And so they go in there. Um, and then as Officer Gordon, he gets, he gets relief again. You know, he, he left, wasn't supposed to be there on the weekend, comes back because he was on call. And then his, the, whoever's picking up the shift comes in. And so Officer Gordon is walking away, just, you know, going home when he realizes, because again, there's 38 of these dudes. There are most of them in this truck, and about four or five of them have gone into this administrative building and taken them hostages as well. And so one of them walking by, Officer Gordon notices that it was one of the prisoners. And so he starts he starts tackling him, and you know they have you know watchtowers with people with snipers and rifles. And you know, the, the guy up there is not sure what's going on because they're both in officer uniforms. He's like, I don't know what the, the Irish line was, but it's like he's thumping them or whacking them or giving them a, a good a, a whole lot of whipping or something. But regardless, um, now the, the plan is, is coming undone. So the dude in the food truck's like, all right, everyone just make a break for it, opens up the thing, and they all start running. And then very quickly, Officer Gordon and the other people, you know, there's other officers that are legitimate there, or like, you know, to the guards, the people escaping in uniform are prisoners. And so one officer gets stabbed, and he ends up dying. Um, I think Oscar, he, he gets shot in the shoulder or in the, in the head or in the shoulder or chest or thorax area. <laughs> um, regardless, they make a break for it on foot and it's, the sirens are going off and at this point Larry and Officer Gordon are like, you know, or Officer Gordon is confronting, eh, he doesn't confront him until later, but Larry hears the sirens because he stays back because he promised his kid that he would make it um, to his graduation and he only has two years left in prison. And so, they make a break for it. Um, some are like gets captured in a river, and other people are driving away in a car. So at the end, you get some credits like 19 were, were uh, recovered or re-arrested within two days. Um, most of the other ones were arrested, you know, whatever in Scotland, Belgium, United States, um, and, and uh, three or four of them were killed in IRA activities or operations. And it doesn't. I don't remember if said like any of them ended up like escaping and just never being found again. I, I can't remember if they said anything like that. But regardless, that's kind of the resolution to the movie. You do have, again, Officer Gordon confronting Larry. Again, they kind of had some relationship. He's like, no, now you call me officer or sir. And Larry's like, you know, just saying, you know, we had, we had to show that the IRA is still functioning after the, um, the, the, uh, uh, the food, food strikes. And so there's not much, like, blowback and he can't get added time to a sentence. The officer Gordon suspects Larry calls him out. The chief, officer Gordon's chief doesn't really think so. You know, he says it's, you know, somebody who devised the plans, one of the people who escaped. And so they kind of just tell each other off and then Larry's serving out his time and then you get the end credits of uh, just of the facts of, of the scenario, of the historical event. So overall, I'll give it a B plus. B, uh, just as a movie itself, I'll give it a B with historical backing B plus. So overall, I recommend this one. Hour and 35, 30 minute runtime. Kind of hard to hear some of the Irish lines, but it is what it is. 
So, thank you for watching another movie review that no one's gonna watch, Maze, and I'll see you on the next one, if there's a next one.